Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming for, to my talk. Uh, I'll try and keep this short because I know there's lunch immediately after me. Before we get started, a quick warning. So while some things uh, in this talk may seem like the wrong thing to do today, and uh, none of this is theoretical. This is all stuff that I saw this year in 2016 in the wild in various companies that I, uh, that I consult for, and therefore represents the sad state of web security in 2016. So. Um, once upon a time, we wrote our own code, like all of it. We knew what was in it. We knew every single little bit. So today, we know better than to code everything from scratch. So we rely on frameworks, libraries, and a bunch of other third-party code. So we outsource authentication. We outsource logging. We outsource database interaction. We outsource API connectivity. Every single thing that isn't strictly unique to the problem that we are solving. This represents an RTFM problem. So because we didn't write all of the stuff that we're running in production, we rely on the developers understanding the functionality and uh, the gotchas by reading document documentation at a level that includes edge cases and known issues, which rarely, rarely happens. When's the last time you read through docs of something that you use of every single little library that you use from A to Z, like all the way through? So that's the, like, the problem setup. How does this problem manifest itself? And uh, I'm going to go into um, demos. So uh, we're going to be talking about an example company. There's like a tiny startup. Uh, they have their idea. They're, they need to build it fast, prove it, and so on. And uh, say they're building like a mobile application or something like that. They're going to need some sort of internal dashboard or something like that. So this is like the, the bare minimum setup. You have, the, you have your little server. You have your web app that's running on it, and say that's control.example.com, and this is five or six years ago, so HTTPS isn't uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, present as it is today. Not like every single person is running it, so you're uh, whatever. Uh, then someone comes along, and they know what they're doing. Your traffic has scaled a bit. They're like, we should probably have a few servers. We're going to stick like. Uh, a load balancer in front of it. We're going to have an internal network that is example.net. Um, and we're going to have uh, our load balancer uh, run all the traffic. So that's fine. That's you know, still working exactly as your app did before. And then someone comes along and is like, hey, it's you know, 2014 or 15 or something like that. Everyone's implementing this cool SSL thing. We should probably add HTTPS. But it's, it's a pain to manage the certificates and all of the servers and everything. So let's just terminate the SSL on the load balancer. So internally, our network is exactly the same as it was before. Our servers are seeing the same HTTP traffic, because this is an internal secure network. And we're just doing HTTPS here and terminating it here. So you run that for a bit. And then someone's like, OK, but. Um, We've tested all of our apps. We've tested everything. Everything pretty much works on HTTPS. We don't ever really want or need HTTP anymore. But there's like legacy clients. You know they work, but you can't change them. So what we're going to do is we're going to redirect. When someone shows up which, with HTTP, we're going to redirect them to HTTPS. And at that point, you think we're secure. All of our traffic, the one, the, all of the traffic that we can uh, influence is being served over HTTPS. If anyone wanders in on HTTP, we're going to send them to HTTP, uh, HTTPS. They're never going to see HTTP again. That's it. We're good. We're golden. So, um, but if the servers only ever see HTTP internally, how will they know that it's HTTPS? And the spoiler here is they won't, not by default. And the question is, why do we even care? Do we even care that our app knows that it's on HTTPS? And some of you might be thinking, nah. So an A side, what happens when you want authentication and you're like scrappy and you can't be bothered implementing stuff that isn't your core product? You outsource, like I said. And you're going to outsource authentication. You're going to use OAuth. If, anyone's, if, if you've ever used login with Facebook, login with Google, login with Twitter, any of those, you've used OAuth. So this is a quick primer on OAuth. You have your website, which has a button which says, log in with Google, log in with Facebook. You redirect them to 
the thing that they're logging in with. They log in there, they say, yes, I trust the thing, and then you get redirected back to your thing. The user gets redirected back to your thing, and they pass in an access token. So if you just invented this whole thing, what would the security implications here, what would the exposure here be? Um, the simplest one is someone gets people to, um, to log in. Well, the, the easiest one is someone steals this. When they get redirected back to your site, someone steals this, and they impersonate that user towards you. Um, uh, another tricky part is um, someone uh, changes the, uh, the callback to this to point to them. And another one is someone changes the page here to say login with Facebook, but it actually takes you to something that is not Facebook, and you give out your credentials there. Against this, against someone changing where people go, we protect with HTTPS. You serve this page over HTTPS, and that, to a moderate degree, guarantees that the page hasn't been tampered with. Uh, we protect against this, uh, someone changing where the user gets taken back um, by whitelisting the callback. So when this page redirects back to you, um, on their side, we say, only redirect people to these URLs, otherwise that's not me. And we protect against this by ensuring that this request is HTTPS, like this one isn't. So when we configure it, when we configure our authentication provider there, we say the whitelist is HTTPS. OK, so that's like OAuth 101. So what would we like to see when we send a user over somewhere to log in with Google, for instance? We'd like to see this. The user requests HTTP. Big IP is our load balancer. He goes like, wait, you're not on HTTPS. Scram, go to HTTPS. The user goes there. Um, this is the request for this, the home page via HTTPS. The user goes there, and then you're hitting, you're no longer hitting the load balancer. You're hitting our actual web servers. And they say, um, by the way, these examples are in Flask, but the actual stuff uh, applies to anything, literally. Um, this is the um, HTTPS homepage, and it goes like, oh, well, hold on. You're not logged in. You need to go to the login page. And then this is the request for the login page where it goes, hold on. I don't actually know how to log you in locally. The only way I know how to log you in is via Google, so you're going to go to Google. This includes, I, I've truncated this for, for brevity, but it includes the redirect URI. Why do we need to provide this? Why do we even need to send people back uh, through redirects, because you cannot guarantee that, your, th that the thing that people are logging in is accessible by Google. So the only way Google knows how to talk to you is by telling the user what to tell you. So the redirect URL, uh, URL is here, HTTPS. And here you have the whole people log in. Do you want to trust example.com to access their Google account? They say yes. And then they are forwarded by Google server to your thing where they're passing in this. This is the secret thing that identifies that user to you, which you can then use to talk to Google. And then there's the whole complication behind that. But that's, that's the secret thing that the user comes back to you with and says, here, you can use this to verify who I am with Google. That completes the login. So this is what we'd like to see. This is a very nice flow. The user showed up insecurely. We used the first opportunity to redirect them to HTTPS. And after that, it's all secure. In the, in the uh, flow that I, uh, that I described, if nobody paid attention to this, in the load balancer, the servers, the SSL termination on the load balancer, what you're actually going to see is this. User shows up unencrypted. Load balancer goes, whoa, go, go to HTTPS. Uh, you hit the, the page over HTTPS, and the Flask goes, you're not logged in. Go to log in. But it tells you to go to HTTP. The load balancer then goes, whoa, you're not logged. You're not uh, secure. Go to HTTPS. And then you hit that URL, and you get redirected to Google with the callback being HTTP. You go through the whole login, and Google sends you to HTTP. This happens because, so the problems here are very specific to HTTP as a protocol, the open web, and so on, because HTTP is one of, I believe, the only protocols in the world. Um, that is aware that, first of all, does virtual hosting where the IP doesn't mean the resource, but the, 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 
the virtual host means that the host name means uh, a specific thing, and one of the only protocols that links between them. So like your your app links to Google, Google links you to something, you go back to your thing. So they all have to to um, be self-aware. They need to be able to construct a link to themselves. So why? Um, this, this stuff is very difficult to catch because browsers, that what you just saw in the previous example, that is not bad behavior to browsers. They will happily do that without any sort of warning yet. So how do we fix or avoid this scenario? There's a thing called the X-forwarded proto header. When a load balancer takes a request and forwards it to you, you will no longer be seeing the original IP address that the request came from. You're seeing the request come from the load balancer. So they do X forwarded for, where they set the IP address of the thing that they forwarded. There's also this header where they say, if, if the load balancer terminates HTTPS and sends forward uh, an HTTP request, it's going to set X forwarded proto header and say, this request was initially HTTPS. Why don't um, web frameworks and so on trust this header um, implicitly by default? You could make a very, very, you could make a very, very uh, lame argument um, that it, this is the more secure approach. Um, I've I've spent about half an hour trying to figure out if you could trick an application into thinking that it's HTTPS but it's not really, what could you do that you couldn't previously? I couldn't come up with anything. So um, you need to be sure that if you're using a load balancer, you're making your um, web framework or the web servers that are handling the requests respect this header. Another thing is you need to watch out for various components that you're using treating the security headers differently. Specifically, um, we saw that the load balancer does the HTTPS enforcement, the redirect. There's also uh, an add-on for Flask called SSLify, which will enforce all requests to be HTTPS. And all of our apps were using it, and it was working. And what I found was that Flask, by default, doesn't trust this header. It doesn't read the X-forwarded proto header and say, ooh, this was HTTPS. But SSLify does. So SSLify will redirect you back to SSL unless either the, the normal this was SSL uh, flag is set or the X forwarded proto header is set. So you have a web app that runs a tiny extension which treats security headers differently. This is a major deal. So another way to avoid the scenario is you should remove HTTP from the OAuth whitelist. This is a no-brainer. You should not be allowing people to be redirected from Google, from Facebook, from all of those back to HTTP. Why this was the way it was? Because, before, because OAuth was implemented, the, the login thing was implemented at the specific client before they did SSL. They just added on SSL. Things kept working. Nobody bothered to check. Perfect. Like Everything works. Um, an important thing is anything that touches or looks like it touches or looks like it might touch or is like second, uh, second step removed from any sort of security configuration needs to trigger an audit, an audit of what actually happens, of how things actually work. Someone needs to look at what the flow work looks like on the network, in the browser, in the, uh, in the connections, and say, yes, this is still what we'd like to happen because the, um, the, the broken flow is completely invisible to any to, to a normal user uh, in a browser. I was using the broken flow for about two months before I noticed it because I went looking for something else. Um, and HST, HSTS. Uh, HSTS stands for HTTP Strict Transport Security. It is a header that you set on secure requests that says, hi, welcome to my secure thing. I would like you to never speak to me uh, via unsecured protocol ever again. You can set a shorter thing, but that's how we use it. So HSTS means that once you have established a secure connection with a client, they will never approach you over HTTP again. This is a good way of securing against uh, um, old bookmarks. So if you had bookmarks to HTTP and you implement HTTPS, you set HSTS and the old bookmarks automatic automatically turn into HTTPS. Hmm. 
right? Story time two. In this example, which is exactly the same as, uh, as the one we had, um, we had one application that people were using. Um, we had one application that people were using. But that's never the case. You have one app, and you think that's going to be the app that we have, and then someone needs a stats board and an FAQ and whatever. So you have many. So if you've ever set up OAuth, if you've ever set up login with Google, login with Facebook, all of those, for multiple apps against the same provider, did you bother setting up separate OAuth clients? I didn't. Like, I did this a few times. I never bothered to do that, because it's like, it's going to be the same data. It's gonna, yeah. In this setup, the vulnerability that I showed you, which, allows peop which transmits the OAuth token over unencrypted HTTP, where, you, where an attacker can sniff it by sniffing the public uh, internet, sniffing your uh, Starbucks Wi-Fi, hotel Wi-Fi, whatever. That means that if someone is logging into like FAQ or customer support or whatever, and someone steals their token, they can immediately replay that token against a very important app. So what you're, making, what you're, what you're doing here is you're making it um, easy to cross over between apps by sniffing on. So someone logged into some innocuous app, and you're going to replay that against the more important one. So split up your OAuth clients. This is, this is like a no-brainer, and it's really important. Um, the takeaways from this is you need to understand the stuff that you use better. You need to really spend time um, on, on all of that stuff because um, it's, it's very, very important to not do the, 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 the stupid little mistakes that I, that I outlined here. Uh, HSDS is a must. There's, there's just no discussion. And be more vigilant with code reviews, especially on security impact and stuff. Uh, bringing in a fresh pair of eyes helps every once in a while. I, I spotted this. This was in the wild for a couple of years. I spotted it because it was fresh. And there's no silver bullet for security, but one flaw can make the whole system insecure. And uh, this is a uh, final warning. This is, talk is not an endorsement to roll everything yourself, just to understand the stuff that you use. Uh, thank you.